Welcome to the power of... The streets are all alike. The buildings are all alike. The businesses all look alike. The reason for this being that most businessmen in this country are playing a game called Follow the Follower. Hey, this is episode seven, and it's a $16 billion episode. $16 billion, because if WeWork took food out of their formula, they would pop like a balloon. Like a balloon on the floor popped ugly. It would not work. So this episode obviously is about food because why? Why is it $16 billion? Why? Because if they didn't have it, it would be over. What element in your property are you talking about right now to connect like on the biggest social network in the world? The largest social network, the oldest one, and it's called food. It is not Facebook. It is not Instagram. It is not Snapchat. It is not the next seven ones that are going to show up. That is not where the most business conduct is conducted. The most business is conducted over food, over wine, over cocktails, over dessert, over dinner, over barbecues. Food is the biggest social network in the world, and it's played on the platform known as Earth, Bricks, and Sticks. It's not on the internet. So trust me, all the business is done over food, and I'm not the one saying this. WeWork is. $16 billion. Okay, so this is a two-part series. This is the most biggest concept yet that's been on the power of paint. The whole show is about making the most money out of your property through the power of design, through the power of paint, through the power of you know experience. And it's funny because I was prepping, show prepping for this, and I realized that I designed for all seven um, uh, senses. And everybody's like, no, there's five senses. No, there's eight actually, but I designed for seven of them. And you know the five, so I won't go over that. But then there's the sense of balance and the sense of time. And those are crucial on your property. What, your architect's not telling you this? Your designer's like, uh, doesn't even know about them? The sense of time, the sense of balance are crucial. How important is the sense of balance? It's the most important, not sight, not hearing, uh, not taste, not touch. It's the most important sense in some, in some villages where the kids have to go across these creeks, uh, these rivers, and if they don't have a sense of balance, they die. That's how important the sense of balance is. You get things right on your property, you'll know it because your paycheck is feeling it. The rent rates are higher. You have a waiting list to be in your property. Okay, so let's talk about what is this huge thing. The biggest social network in the world is food. Um, this episode is gonna be on the high end. The high end of the stuff, for example, like Baccarat. This is Baccarat Hotel. This is Baccarat's ultimate, look, look at that. I'll, I'll do a lot of overlays. There's no site visits on this episode, just talking about the companies like Baccarat. Uh, who's this? ESPN Sports. How disconnected can you get? No, every time you go to a stadium, you have a hot dog, a beer, nachos, popcorn, right? Here's ESPN's Disney owned, okay? I think this is this ESPN grill. There's also the Fox Sports Grill. Um, we just lost one here in Houston called the Texans Grill, but it's out of business now. So here's Prada. Prada buys a bakery. Okay, there's a couple reasons why they buy it. But number one thing is so they can have that, that, social, that social connection, the social network you eat and what does that mean when you eat? I've hinted at this already before, but never in a focused thing. So this is from Money Magazine. Remember, if you want these links, I'm bundling them all up, one through seven, all in one email. I'll just send it to you if you want it. Just put info or something. I'll, I'll figure it out. If you want it, I'll just send it to you. Just email me so I know it. So in Money Magazine, okay, this whole article was on what's going on in, um, in, uh, in, in real estate. And, and there's this thing here. They, Give them free treats. Yeah, no kidding. You give, them, you give them a taste of the ice cream, they want to buy the whole ice cream cone, right? So I'm just going to read this. Consumers, even one free chocolate. One, increases shoppers' desire for non-food luxuries, including expensive watches, dressy designer shirts, Mac, uh, laptops, right after eating it, according to a study published in the Journal of Consumer Research. Duh, we all know this. Man, when I was at the Porsche dealership, they had the most beautiful Porsche bottles. I'll show those. Uh, Lambo does the same thing. I think even Ferrari. I, everybody you go to takes the bottle of water and labels it because it's a, it's a touch point because it's 
huge. But if you take it to the next step, which is what Prada has done by buying their, their uh, bakery. It's in Milan and they did it for a lot of good reasons, but I'll tell you it's mainly so they can create the connections with their buyers and with their models and with their marketing people and building that community of, of people. So now, that's the same thing that WeWork is doing. They're building a community of people. Otherwise, it's just a, um, it's an executive suite. You know, you get a little office for 25 bucks or whatever, a week, a month. They create a vibe and if they take away the food, the vibe would be gone. I mean, yeah, they got great textures, uh, you know, materials, couch arrangement, space. Yeah, but that's just fashion, and fashion will be changed in 36 months and 48 months, and so will they. They will evolve. They're not, they're not, those guys are smart, and what they got going on is killing it. So now I'm going to read, this is from Money Magazine still, right here. They carefully engineer store ambiance. Ambience is taking into account all seven senses. Ambient sounds and smells make you less uh, careful when you, with your cash. In an appliance store, research Lindstrom uh, pumped in the smells of apple pie and the sales of ovens and fridges went up 23%. You want to increase your sales 23%? Law office, law office, uh, accounting firm, architectural firms. What are you doing with smell? You can increase your closing rate by 23% because you're thinking as a, a as a complete designer, not a efficient. Okay, is, you know, if you're only about the price, you fail. There's an emotional connection with everything. Look at a Ferrari and not be connected emotionally. Okay, so this is talking about your property, even if it's a, even if it's just a law office. What's the office like? What's the conference room like? What's the view like? Oh, we don't have a view. We're in the middle of. Look, we work to brick buildings and added the right elements, and now they're sixteen billion dollars. They des they they deserve this. I'm not even gonna. That paper blew away. I don't need it because now I'm gonna go into these other ones. Okay, so let's look. Bach Rock Hotel. This isn't this isn't even food industries I'm talking about. Man, the wind is busy out here. Okay. Stop it. I don't want them anyway. They're gone. Holy cow. It's a battle of Brad versus the wind. All right, so obviously I'm a fan of Porsche. A lot of things Porsche. I've owned several Porsches. But I got to show you this right there. Porsche extends its luxury brand experience with a new restaurant 356. You think Porsche is messing around? They understand the largest social network in the world is food, and it's played out in their property. You're connected to them, man. What's this one here? Oh, this one. Vogue. Vogue Cafe to open in Dubai. Right here. Right there. Vogue is a magazine. That's a business going out. Okay, so they got the internet presence, and it's actually strong, and it's really, really good. But it originally started as... as as a magazine. I guess that's not fair for me to even mention that because they have definitely morphed into a powerhouse. And now they know to have a touch point in the real world, you gotta have a cafe. So Vogue opens up a cafe in Dubai. It's that's just awesome. What's this one? Oh, this one. This one is a guy who owns a building, an office building. Okay. Design focus. This is in Luxio, one of my favorite places to go for you know cutting edge stuff. Storyline Cafe and Jun Jun Sinkino. I am sorry, but Jun Sakino, I your name was pronounced all in one word in the title. You saw this. And then down here, it's broken up into June Sakino. But let me give you credit, dude. You enhance the building's personality. Can you see that, the part I underlined right there? Enhance the building's personality. That's like a fresh coat of paint, right? And how did he do it? The transforming of the Bangkok office space into a co-working cafe. Ah, somebody wants to be a WeWork competitor. Co-working cafe yields a cozy environment that enhances the building's personality. Way to go, June. I look forward to shaking your hand, dude. You really, you did a great job by what I can see. I've not been to Bangkok. Now, when I do, I'll come by and see it. So, to wrap up this part of the show, bagels. This is a true, honest story of how I've been affected by food in a, not a restaurant, but by a business that I've done hundreds and thousands of dollars with, okay? A&E graphics. Back in the day, we'd print a regular, of uh, an original, right? And once the original was printed, we would use it to run ammonia-smelling blueprint paper, okay? And you have to. It's what you would submit to the city. Technologies come along. You don't have to do the big 24 by 36 because the old pens used to be real thick even on the pen plotters. Now inkjet's so tiny, we can be very clear on 11 by 17 and just email stuff to the city. It's totally different now. But in the old days, you have to get these blueprints made. No way around it. I didn't want to own one in my house. They stink. So you had Ridgeways in Houston, you had A&E Graphics. I went to A&E Graphics because in the morning, a hot bagel with cream cheese was always there. If you wanted two, have two. No one cared. You want three, have three. This was good for a guy like me. I was hungry back then. And if you had to go in the afternoon, if you couldn't get the bagel, they always had this big, delicious cookies. This isn't even full-on cafe. This is not even. This is not even a coffee pot. I think they had a coffee pot. This was just. This was just a connection point at the smallest, simplest letter level. 
uh, my plastic company here in Houston, uh, ANC Plastics, the one I buy all my, my plexiglass and coral plast, anything I do with plastic for our designs, they always, they do the same thing. They have their cookies out there in the mornings, they have their bagels, and it just makes me smile. It's not as strong as how A&E Graphics used to do it in the day, because they'd have like a selection. Um, even now, still, when uh, when bison uh, lumber comes in to the Lennar offices, you can always count on a big thing of fruit. You know, this is the oldest oldest thing that you know the power of the donut. You get you come in with a dozen donuts, and they let you right through to the front door. Well, it works, and now you take it to the next level through your real estate, through a location, uh, through through a location on your property, whether it's a, a grocery store and you got a little cafe. I mean, Nordstrom's, Neiman Marcus, they've always had this. They've always had their in you know Neiman Marcus at the top. They had their restaurant. Nordstrom's has a coffee shop right now, right at the front when you walk into Nordstrom's. You know, that's always been there. We're talking about warehouses, and next week I'll get into food at the lower end, okay? And because this was the high end, I got the quote of the day, and it's from Coco Chanel. She's like just a crazy inspiration for me because she just, she just knew how to do it. So here's what Coco said. Don't be like the rest of them, darling. Don't. You're going to get the regular pay because you're doing the regular thing. You're like the rest of them. Coco made premiums on her product, on her services. So, are you a swimming pool com supply company? You walk in and you smell like chlorine, of course, but how is it? Is, are you touching on all five senses? I don't know if you are, not the ones I know of. So, let's get to the, re uh, the residential. So, the first story I was gonna share, I got to thinking about it all this week. It was one of mine, I've done it twice, and I made incredibly good margins on it, really good returns. And it's taking a flat roof house and adding a pitch roof. And that's dramatic. That's what you have to do. That's more than just doing carpeting or you know putting in something new like a new air conditioning system. So I would take a flat roof house and I built the pitch roof and I'd sell it. In Houston, we get 30, 48 inches, 100 inches of rain. I don't know what we get here. It's a lot. And a flat roof doesn't work. So the first house I ever bought, I did it. And I didn't know it, but I stumbled across the money maker. Later on, I found a big house on the golf course. It was real modern looking. It had two different levels, two different plate heights for you guys know what I'm talking about. And I roofed it. I put a roof over the top of it and I made a ton of money. That trick, I started driving around looking for more flat roof houses in the city. And I found a few communities that did them back in the 70s to where I could go pick them up, flip them, but I've just moved on from that. I'm, I'm into helping big properties now. I do like my small houses. I love little houses. I mean, I do have a castle company. Okay, so now that story you probably can't repeat if you're in Baltimore. There's probably not a lot of flat roof houses. So I thought that's not fair to share that story, right? And go deep into the numbers and all that. So I got to thinking, what can I help you do? You got a house that's, uh, that you fixed up, you're ready to flip it, and you just haven't sold it, right? Annoying, right? So have you considered softening it with life? Have you brought any life to the front of it? And when I mean life, you have fire. Uh, like a fire pit in the backyard, you're not gonna you're not gonna find a guy who can pull it off in the front yet. I, I haven't been able to do it. I've been playing with it. How can I put like a fire pit or fire trough in the front? I'm not happy yet. When I do, I'll show it off here. Power of paint's gonna see it first. Um, then there's wind, which is really really good. Like flags, you put a flag out front. The wind it, it brings the property to life. Uh, there's animatronics, which you know ribbons on the roof, that sort of thing. You got to bring the room to life, but that's expensive. Animatronics look stupid in the wrong setting. So then the last one is um, water, a water feature, a little pond, a lot of people do that. Okay, I love all of these. So the one that I'm, I'm hot on right now is curtains. Curtains on the front porch. Not the whole time, just when you're doing the open house, show it, the woman will fall in love with it. Here, let me show you another one. This is subtle, it's not even framing in the front porch. This is off to the side. If your house style, right there, can you see that? You got the curtains, very soft, and it's bringing life to the front porch. Here's another one. These are just gorgeous, gorgeous to me. Now, it's not it's not my style, but it would sell the house because it brings life. If you're not there, sales agent's not there. That stands out. They go and look, think, think of like, like what Don Luke told me a long time ago. They go and look at 10 different houses, and they get 10 different brochures from different, bu different builders and real, you know, realtors. They need to walk home in their kitchen table, lay out the brochures and say, you know, I like the house that had and it has to have that sparkle. This is the cheapest, easiest sparkle. This is the one element that's not like the others. No one's gonna, ha <laughs> that sound like PBS broadcasting right there. So curtains, consider it. You have a house that's not moving right away, hasn't flipped like you wanted, add it, especially on open house days. That's it for this episode of Power of Paint. Next week, I'm gonna be deep into food. Imagine that, it's still $16 billion. I'm not gonna tiptoe around it. The gas stations and the warehouses and the blueprint shops, they're nailing it, and I gotta congratulate a couple of them on the next episode. So that's it of the power of
The Power of Paint is now on iTunes.